the three things or the three habits that you have to practice to be a beast at film scoring. My name is Mark Giovanni, I'm a composer of that music for movies that have gone to Amazon Prime, Netflix, Lifetime, Hallmark Channel. I'm also the founder of Cinematic Composing, where we take students from zero to full-time career. If you want to work directly with me and with another 12 mentors like Spider-Man composer Chris Young, Oscar-nominated composer Javier Navarrete and so many more, schedule a call with me, let's talk, see if you're a good fit, we just take 20 people each year. Moving on. All right, you just need three things, really, just three things as a composer. Let's talk about it. So first is the system. You need to be able to sit down, put your hands on the keyboard and start composing. So this is very important. Now, in the past, I used to have a more complex system. You need it for the system to be more complex because the computers were slower. Recently, I had three computers and then I went down to two computers, like one main computer and a slave computer. 128 gigs of RAM, 128, so 256. So, very powerful rig, very expensive, very complex as well. At the beginning of this year, I went from two computers to one computer and having everything internal. So no beep. Anyway, we are not gonna talk technical today. So not, we're not gonna talk about the pro, the enable, disable track, instrument track, rock tracks, but basically everything in one computer. Recently, this drive got corrupted. No! So at the moment, as crazy as it sounds, I'm transitioning from a one very powerful desktop computer to having everything here. And the crazy, like, the craziest thing is that these days you can fit almost the same amount of power that you had here into a laptop. Just crazy to think that I've been composing here for 14 years and it's been my studio. And now I'm like, let's compose. Just crazy. And then I can take this computer with me, export stems in a flight to Florida. I, I don't know, Just it's just crazy, but it's doable and you don't need that powerful of a computer. That's what I'm trying to say. That yes, you need a system so you can sit down, put the hands on the keyboard and start performing, start composing. But do not obsess about it. Keep it simple, especially at the beginning. Don't make it complex, it's gonna slow you down. So that's the first thing, the hardware and the template. So you can take your musical ideas and the melodies that you hear in your head or the orchestration that you hear in your head and create a mock-up without friction fast and efficiently. Second thing, now you know how to use this, everything's ready, but now it's time to compose. The second thing that I recommend, learn the cliches. And I know I have my own unique voice, so do I. But when as you start, it's good that when you are composing for a movie or for, or even if it's a standalone music or library music, production music, trail, whatever it is, that you have, that you know where to start. So you don't wonder and you don't waste time. Sometimes you're gonna be scoring in a scene and the scene requires for your music to do blah, whatever it is, to add support, to enhance, to speed. And so there are specific things that you can start with that are gonna make your music successful, meaning it's going to work with the scene. You're gonna put that and on top of that, you're gonna put your own voice your own very unique voice, and that's what's gonna make something that's uniquely yours, but works with the scene or whatever it is. And it's not even that complicated. We're talking like for positive emotions and love, we're gonna have, you know, major chords, iconic melodies, strings and piano, blah, blah, blah. For sadness and negative, it's going to be the same thing with minor chords. Suspense is like sadness, but with a harmonic twist, a few dissonances. Then action with intensity, it's like suspense, but it's pulsed and it's a slower harmonic change is less thematic, more motivic. Then we've got action high intensity, it's like action mid intensity on asteroids. And it's less predictive, it's more abrupt changes. We've got the seven eights, the figures, crazy rhythms. We've got the crazy orchestration. After that, we transition to the fantasy, right? We've got the fantasy, magic, the supernatural around there, and all these things. Now is where we talk, I think we talked about this last week, but that's what we talk with moving those major minor chords up and down minor or major thirds and having those magic melodies that step outside from the, from the tonality. We talked about that last week. And then we've got Adventure Hero, Adventure Pilan. Those are very fun styles, not that useful. Generally, we don't get to ride for that heroic moment all the time, but they're a lot of fun. We've got horror and a few more styles, trailer, emotional, etc. But learn the cliches, learn the cliches. Not to use them, maybe not to use them, but sometimes maybe there's a tint of sadness and what are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna ride your your music, but you have a framework, right? Your music inside that framework and you're gonna be composing music way faster. Number three is you need to know how to score a scene. 
And it's very simple. It's not that hard. In general, what I see is people wonder, like, okay, there's this scene, then you get inspired. No. So basically, you can do three things. So the theme, tension release, or connecting emotions. And then the fourth thing is like the neutrality, either the pulse or the drones. So I generally write these things down, but titles, right? So when you are scoring a scene, you can do three main things. You can have the theme, and you're gonna introduce the theme at a macro level when the story progresses, when there's a reveal, when there's something important, when the, boom, you've got the theme. So that's the first thing that you can do, the theme or the motive or whatever it is. The second thing is going to be the tension release. Every conversation, everything in life, there's always a moment of tension and then there's release. Or there's a moment that prefers, reaches a climax, and then we've got a release. Always, like a conversation, there's a question, there's an answer. You ask for something and then they give you that back. Whatever it is, there's always a back and forth. So that's that rhythm. So you can follow that musically and it feels very natural. There's a conversation. Like, what do I do? They are just talking. What do I do musically? Maybe a very expanded version of your theme. You go from thematic to chord, that sort of thing. In those chords, there's one chord that creates more tension and the one that generates a little bit of release. This texture with the strings and then results with woods. Or we've got this texture presented with the string sulpunt and resolving sultas. I don't know, and just making things up. It's a very easy way to follow the action, what's happening in the scene. It works in every, it works for dialogue, it works for action, it works for everything. And that's at the micro level. But that always, always happens. They look through the window and then they discover something. So the music prepares, creates tension, resolves. And we're talking at the micro level at the three seconds, six seconds, right? What's the music doing? And that's when the music follows the action, right? Not always you need to do that. Again, sometimes we've got at the macro level, it's more thematic thing. Sometimes we can have a song form because the scene has the structure that allows a song form and having the big theme, right? Because there's no dialogue, it's big landscape, whatever it is. But number one, the theme at the macro level, when the story moves forward and progresses, it's a good moment or when there's a reveal or we discover something new, the theme. The second thing is the tension release we talked about. And then we've got connecting emotions. We've got the stingers, we've got the effects, we've got the connecting music from one scene to the other. It's very effective, it's very typical, and it's very useful. All right, so one, two, three. Now, as a fourth thing, it's bonus. There's a type of music that is very useful for support. There's dialogue, support. There's a little bit of tension, support. And what that does is it adds support and it can do two things. It can slow down or it can speed up the scene. If you have a drone underneath whatever it is that's happening in the scene, that's gonna add a little bit of support and generally it's going to slow down the scene a little bit. It's not gonna do much. On the other side, we've got the action mid intensity, like the typical pulsing synth or pulsing bass or staccato strings, things like this. That's still neutral. It's neutral, but it adds a little bit of tension and it speeds up the scene. It adds intensity in a neutral way. That's why action mid intensity, as we described it earlier, the harmonic changes are way slower than, let's say, suspense, because it's a style that creates tension and adds support, but not necessarily dramatically goes into the bright or dark. Generally, it's not positive or negative. It's just there adding support, creating tension, speeding things up generally. So you can do one, two, three, or bonus here, all right? So that's it, the three things or the three habits that you have to practice to be a beast at film scoring is number one, have a system that allows you to sit down and work fast and efficiently. Second, and even most important, know what to do with this, right? Because this is not gonna write music by itself. You have to know what to do in each case. And number three, learn film scoring, because you may be doing standalone music or production music, library music, trailer music, great, awesome, fantastic. But if you want to go into the film scoring or video games, you need to learn about the storytelling, drama, structure, and understanding how the music affects to the scene. And as a composer, as a film composer or a media composer, how to do that effectively. All right, that's it in the video. I'll see you in the next one, bye.